Hey everybody, this is Seth with Butterscotch Shenanigans, and uh, this is a little talk that I put together a few weeks back for the local IGDA chapter here in St. Louis, and uh, it's a short talk about if you are designing a, a game that has a crafting system in it, how you can think about automating the development of that crafting system so that it's much more flexible and much easier to work with. Uh, so let's get started. So the current game that we're working on as a studio is called Crashlands, and uh, if you want to check out more about it, you can click on the link in the sidebar there. But uh, in a nutshell, it's, it's uh, a game that has a lot of exploration and crafting as the core basis for progression. And what we found is that in order to allow the player to become more powerful and advance through the game through crafting, uh, it takes a lot of content to make this happen. And uh, we have in Crashlands 19 tiers of content, meaning uh, basically if, if you could think about it as leveling up through completing an armor set and weapons and tools and all that stuff, uh, we have about 19 complete sets of those things. And uh, in order to execute this, we've had to create over 800 unique items in the game in order to make those 19 tiers of content happen. And we have uh, over 470 things that the player can craft. Uh, and that is all just to get those 19 tiers of content. So if you're working on a crafting game, you're going to run into a similar issue, which is that it just takes just a shitload of content to make it a viable uh, progression system. And when we first started putting together all of these recipes in Crashlands, we used a manual recipe design. Meaning, uh, if we wanted to build, say, a log chest plate like this one, we would choose the ingredients. So here's, you know, a log, uh, a stick, and some sawgrass blades. And we would just manually enter the values. So we'd, we would type in, this is going to take 25 logs, and three sticks, and seven sawgrass blades. Um, and this, this worked out kind of okay when we were early on, when we were working on the game early, and when pretty much all we had in the game was logs and, and grass. Uh, but then we started running into a weird problem where this started breaking down. And here's what happened. Uh, so in Crashlands, we found that something like 3% of the world can have a resource on it. So here's a here's 100 tiles on the ground, 100 grid spaces, with uh, 3% coverage for resources. We found that... If we had a lot more resources than that, it was boring because it was just too easy to get stuff. And if we have fewer resources than this, uh, then it was it was also boring because you spend most of your time just wandering around aimlessly. Uh, so there's kind of a there's kind of a fixed amount of resources we can have in the world. And when we wanted to add the next tier of content, let's say it's stone and berries, uh, that's going to be the next group of items that you're going to be crafting with. So when it came time for us to add those to the world, we found that we couldn't just put them on the ground. We had to actually replace some of the previous resources. And we ended up with this kind of a situation where now in any given spot where you may have seen three log trees because that was all that existed, now you'll see maybe a log tree, a stone, and some berries. So as you can imagine, uh, this screwed up our balance because uh, suddenly there's one, like in, in this image, you can see there's one third as many log trees in the world, which means any recipe that uses wood is going to be three times harder to build. So uh, we would go back and tweak those recipes. And then when we added the next tier of content, once again, uh, bringing new things into the world, it would break everything again. And so it became a completely impossible problem uh, for us to solve as long as we were doing manual recipe design. So what we had to do to fix this is we had to, uh, we had to automate our crafting system, meaning we shouldn't be manually telling the game how many logs it takes, how many sticks it takes. Uh, the game should tell us how many logs and sticks it takes because there's no way for us to balance all these things. So in order to figure out how to automate the system, and I think when automating any system, it's always a good idea to abstract it down to the simplest possible level. 
And what we realized is that crafting systems are very analogous to merchant systems. Merchant system meaning a system where you just buy something from a vendor. Um, you know, if you were to buy, say, a, a wooden chest plate from a vendor, uh, you would maybe spend a few gold coins. And if you wanted a more powerful uh, chest plate from that vendor, say like this stone one, you would just spend more gold coins. And the reason I say this is like a crafting system is because a crafting system is all about transformation. You know, you take, say, some logs and some other stuff and you convert it into a chest plate. Well, here you're also con making a conversion. You're taking gold or currency and you're converting it into a chest plate. The difference is in a, in a merchant system, there's only one ingredient and that one ingredient just goes into every single thing. Uh, you know, if we contrast that with what we have in a crafting system, you know, even if this was the simplest possible uh, situation, it's suddenly hard to figure out which which one of these is harder to get. You know, with the with the gold example, we know that a, that this pile of gold is bigger than this other one, right? But what about this pile of of five rocks versus this pile of six logs? Which one is harder to get? I don't know. Um, and the reason, of course, is because gold is standardized. Uh, Twenty gold pieces is more than three gold pieces, and we're only using gold for everything. Meanwhile, in a crafting system, it's never just going to be one ingredient. It's, it's always tons of stuff. Uh, and so how do we compare it? How do we compare this pile of rocks and sticks to this pile of logs and, and grass and berries? Uh, we can't because they're not comparable. It's literally an apples and oranges situation. But if we can come up with a standardized way to represent a stone and a log and a berry and, and a stick and all that stuff, um, then we can we can exactly compare these two piles of things very easily. So uh, so now I'm going to talk about how we did that in Crashlands, and this may be applicable to your game. It may not be, uh, but at the very least, I hope that it gives you a, a sense of maybe just a way to think about this kind of stuff. So uh, in Crashlands, we used the concept of rarity as our measurement of value. And I think, I think it's safe to assume that if something is really rare, the player is going to tend to value it more, uh, provided it actually exists in recipes and stuff. Uh, but if a component is really rare, then it's going to have high value. And if it's super common and it's everywhere, um, then it's going to have lower value. So we use a uh, formula that, that generates a number that we call the frequency index. The frequency index is just a single number that tells us how common an item is. And we generate that frequency index automatically. Uh, the game basically sifts through all the different variables and values that it has to figure out, uh, you know, what's the spawn rate of trees? Where do trees appear in the world? And then what do trees drop? What's the propensity of a tree to drop a log versus a stick, you know, whatever. Um, and every single item in the game gets a frequency index. So here is, uh, here are three frequency indices from Crashlands. Uh, so log is 54, stone is 20, berry is 8. Uh, what does that mean? All that means is if you look at these you know, next to each other, if you are exploring and harvesting, you're just out in the world and you're just picking up everything you can, you're going to end up with about 2.6 times more logs than flat stones. And that's represented by the comparison between their two numbers. Uh, the frequency index of a log is 2.6 times higher than the frequency index of a flat stone. Uh, but there's a problem with this number, which is that it's backwards. If you think about, if you think about the gold example, the higher number, the higher the number of gold goes, uh, the more valuable it is. But in this case, we have the opposite situation. The higher the number, the more common it is, which means the higher the number, the less valuable. So we need to flip this around. We need to take the opposite of this. Uh, so let's let's do that. So that's just going to give us the rarity, uh, because the opposite of how common something is is how rare something is. Uh, so an another way to think about this is the more rare an item is, the more effort is required to obtain it in terms of time and, and, and hunting and all that stuff. Uh, so now we can quickly run the numbers on this, and we end up with a log taking 0.018 effort, a stone taking 0.048 and a berry taking 0.115, um, and we also we have basically flipped values here. Uh, so previously, where we said 
oh, you'll end up with 2.6 times more logs than flat stones, you know, in the same amount of time. Another way to think about it is a flat stone is 2.6 times harder to get than a log. So now we have a meaningful standard of measurement. It's just like the gold from before, where the higher number means it's more valuable, it's harder to get. And now we can actually start to measure uh, these items against each other, even though they come from completely different sources, completely different places in the world, and technically aren't really that comparable. So let's look at what this might, what this might look like in game in a recipe. So here we have this beautiful helm produced by uh, my brother, Sam. And uh, we're going to say that this helm takes one effort. So this is the value that we assigned to that helm. And that's a, that's a metric so that we can decide how hard that helm is to get. So we're gonna tell the game, make this helm cost one effort. And we're gonna say this helm is made out of logs, stones, and berries. So the question that we have to ask the game is, how many logs, stones, and berries should this helm take, given that we want it to take one effort to, uh, to get the helm? So first we'll just divide the effort evenly across all three components. So each component gets 0.33 effort. Uh, and so let's look at how that breaks down into logs. Uh, if we take 0.33 effort, and we know that each log takes 0.018 effort, then uh, we end up with 19 logs. So in other words, if the player goes out in the world and expends 0.33 effort, they're gonna end up with 19 logs. So now we know that 19 logs fits into 0.33 effort. And similarly, we do the same thing with the stone with the berries, and the game automatically spits out this recipe for us. So all we did was said, here's how hard it is to make this helm, and here's what it's made of, and the game now gives us the appropriate values. So the cool thing about this is we now don't need to be burdened by balance because it's all happening automatically. So now uh, we can say, gosh, you know, it feels like there's too many trees in the world uh, and it's kind of boring because they're overshadowing all the other resources. We can cut the number of trees in the world by half and the recipes that use logs uh, or various byproducts of tree harvesting, uh, they're all going to adjust automatically to adapt to the fact that we just reduced the spawn rate of trees. Uh, we can also standardize effort by item type. So previously where we said, oh, this helm takes one effort. Well, what if we wanted to just say uh, every helm takes one effort? Uh, then we could do that and we could just have the game algorithmically assign effort by item type. Uh, or we could increase effort by tier. So by that I mean kind of like level. So maybe a level 10 helm takes more effort than a level one helm. You know, we can apply a linear uh, growth curve to that so that the further you get into the game, the harder it is to build things. Uh, we could also have legendary items that take maybe 10 times the effort of a normal item and the game will just plug those values in and, and make it work, no problem. Uh, so in other words, you can pretty much do whatever you want here. You no longer need to be stressed by trying to maintain the balance of this system and adding new resources to the world won't cause any problems. And you can pretty much take this uh, any direction you like. So uh, this is kind of a brief overview of this concept and it's intended to be a starting point uh, for anybody interested in, in putting together a crafting game. There's a lot more specifics to it that you can apply to your game and, and kind of tweak this, this concept however you like. Uh, but I hope this was useful for you. And if you have any questions or whatever, you can, uh, you can just head over to our website at butterscotchshenanigans.com and uh, send us a message using the contact form. All right, thanks, guys, and have a good night.